this video, I'm going to teach you how to film football. Hey, what's going on? My name is Peter Sorellis. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports and videography. And this is a video that I have been waiting to make for a long time. I'm super happy that I finally get to check it off my to-do list. And I'm basically just gonna tell you all the strategy, all the thought that I put into filming football games. I've been working as a full-time videographer and video editor for the Canadian Football League for the past year or so. I just went through a full season filming a whole bunch of football games. And I definitely learned a lot from my first football game of the season to my final football game of the season, like six or seven months later. And I've developed a lot of specific strategies that allow me to get the best shots when I'm filming football games. So let's get into the first thing to consider, which is the sun, actually especially because football is a game that's filmed mostly outside and played mostly outside. You really need to be conscious of the sun. Obviously there's situations like incredibly overcast days, night games, games in indoor arenas, where the lighting is gonna be consistent and it doesn't really make a difference. But most of the games you film, the sun's gonna be out and you're gonna be outside and where you position yourself in relation to the sun is going to be a very important factor to consider when you're trying to get good shots. So I usually like to position myself so that the sun is behind me. This way the light is coming over my shoulder and lighting the subject's faces or whatever part of them I'm facing. Similar to how I'm lighting this shot right now with lights in front of me pointing at my face and the camera where those lights are also pointing at my face. Now I'm not saying when you're filming a football game, the sun must be directly behind you all the time but I like to keep the sun on my back side. It can be a little to the left, it can be a little to the right, but I don't usually like to shoot into the sun because it'll silhouette my players and then they'll be playing in the shadows or it can just completely blow my shot and make the shot unusable. When I'm filming like pregame shots and scenic shots or if I wanna do a specific effect and I want to silhouette a player for some reason, that's different and I'll film with the sun in front of me. But just as like a general rule of thumb, if you're trying to get good looking action shots, keeping the sun behind you is your best bet. Next, let's talk about my position on the field. I'll typically be 15 to 20 yards away from the line of scrimmage. If I'm focusing on the team that's on defense right now, then I'll be 15 to 20 yards behind the line of scrimmage. And if I'm focusing on the team that's on offense, then I'll usually be 15 to 20 yards in front of the line of scrimmage. And I'll keep this distance as the teams move up and down the field and plays happen. If I'm filming the offense and the offense gets to about the 30 yard line, maybe a little bit before, maybe around the 40 yard line, then I will just take off for the end zone and I'll be five to 10 yards deep into the end zone on the sideline. Now, yes, I'll be 10 yards deep into the end zone on the sideline. I film Canadian football and I'm Canadian. So the end zone is 20 yards long. It's a lot of room to work with. If you're American and you're watching this, you might wanna go right to the back of the end zone because it's only a 10 yard end zone or you might wanna park it on the corner area so you can get those corner shots when the offense gets to around the 30 or 40 yard line. But either way, when the team gets a bit over midfield, I like to go to the end zone because those shots in the end zone are the shots that you're really gonna use. You wanna make sure that you're capturing that deep bomb from the 40 yard line all the way to the end zone where the receiver makes a great catch and the crowd goes wild. And I'm super happy to run to the end zone early and get there before everybody else is filming to make sure that I can get that shot. And I don't really mind if along the way I miss like a five or 10 yard completion down the middle at like midfield. It's not that big of a deal to me as long as I get the shot that matters where the players are scoring and everyone's going nuts. Now when a team gets into the red zone, which is inside of the 20 yard line on offense, then I will run right to the back of the end zone and I'll usually be just off center. And this is for multiple reasons. One being just off center in the middle of the end zone gives me a good vantage point for any passes that come down the middle or onto that one side that I'm closer to. And it gives me a shot to get any rushing touchdowns coming down the middle. Plus in Canadian football, the goal post is literally on the goal line in the field of play. Whereas the goal post and the uprights in the NFL and in American football are at the back of the end zone and don't impact the field of play. So if I were to stand dead center in the middle, I would just be filming a goal post and I wouldn't really have a good angle at people coming at me. So being just off center, Although I think it's a good idea anyways, is especially important for me filming Canadian football. 
Now, if a team scores a touchdown, great. Because I've gotten down the field early and I've stayed ahead of the play filming on offense, I'm in a good position to capture it most of the time. If a team isn't scoring a touchdown, then I'll usually run back along the side and get five yards behind the line of scrimmage for when a team is kicking a field goal. I want to make sure that when a field goal is happening, that I've gotten back up the field and can line up a good shot of the kicker and the holder because sometimes field goals get blocked. Sometimes field goals get missed and returned and you want to capture that play. Well, they get returned in Canadian football again. Pardon me for any Americans watching. There's gonna be a lot of Canadian football references in this video. And sometimes you just need to capture a field goal getting kicked. So getting back up the field is gonna give you a much better shot with no players obstructing you rather than if you were to stay in the end zone, you'd have to film the kicker with a whole bunch of linemen in the way and it'd be pretty hard to frame them up. I just don't think it looks as good as if you can get a low angle, tight shot of a kicker and a holder driving the ball. Now, if a team does score a touchdown, you still kind of want to get back into that same position up the field at around the 20 yard line or so, because the team that just scored is going to be kicking off to the team who is receiving at the end zone where the touchdown just happened. So you won't need to go very far and you're going to want to ideally, or at least this is how I like to film kickoffs, film the receiver catching the ball and then let them run past you. And the reason I say this is because most of the time, the person who receives the kickoff gets tackled. And if they run past you and you start filming their face and then they run past you and you're filming their back, then they're going to get tackled and the player who tackles them will be looking right at your camera if they return it to your side, which is perfect because you usually get some really good reaction shots on tackles from kick returns. Some of my favorite shots from this season were players reacting to tackles that they gotten on kick returns and it's pretty much a guaranteed reaction shot that you can use in your edit. Sometimes there'll be a scuffle, and sometimes players will just hype their teammates up, but I feel like this is an underrated moment where there's always a lot of emotion, and by kind of preparing myself to get that shot of the defense making a good tackle, I'm gonna get a more unique shot that most people don't usually think to get. Now, obviously, if a kick goes to the house, you're out of luck doing this, but if a kick goes to the house, you probably weren't covering all 100 yards anyways, and you probably weren't gonna get a good shot of the entire sequence of events, so I don't feel too bad about missing this, and I can at least settle with the fact that I got the first half of the kick. Now, in football, situational understanding of plays is very important. Knowing the game will give you a huge advantage if you're filming the game. And there's kind of a few instances where this comes into play, but one is if it's second and long, if a team is trying to get down the field quickly, or if I just know that a team's about to go deep for whatever reason, then I'll get like 30, 40 yards, maybe even further ahead of the play in anticipation of that big shot play. I think that the best example of this from last season was in October, we're filming some playoff football for the CFL. I knew that Toronto was about to run a fake quarterback sneak and send the ball down the field. And I knew this because I saw that formation that they were just setting up in in practice earlier that week. And I don't think anybody else in the stadium had seen it. So I told my colleague who I was working with, hey, this is a fake. They're about to throw the ball 40 yards down the field and fake this quarterback sneak. And then I booked it from center field where they were about to try this sneak all the way to the goal line. Nobody else with a camera was ready for it, but I got a great shot of the receiver catching the ball off the fake, running across the goal line with his arms spread. And it's like one of my favorite shots of the year, not just for the visual, but also for the story. But I knew they were going long. So I got atypically far ahead of the play. And while everybody else was like at the line of scrimmage waiting for a quarterback sneak, I was at the other end of the field and I got the shot that I needed. So just like understanding things situationally, really being a student of the game, like watching the teams that you're about to film, if you have the means to, will really help you be more prepared to be in the right spot on the day of the game. One more specific situation that I can think of that I find I run into a fair bit is if a team gets pinned back in their own end zone, maybe the other team just kicked it to them and was able to get the punt to go out of bounds at like the two yard line. If that happens, you don't wanna be on the sideline. You wanna make sure that you're at the back of the end zone right behind where the offense is. One, because the offense could end up conceding a safety here, and if the defense gets a sack that leads to a safety, they're gonna go nuts, and you're gonna get a great reaction shot out of it. And two, even if the offense gets out of the pinch, 
then you're going to be able to use that opportunity to get tight shots of the defense looking right at you. Football is usually played on a bigger field and the players are further away from you. So any instance that you get where you can get tight shots of people being close to you is something that you should be taking advantage of. And this is a situation where you can get really good shots of the defense, which doesn't usually happen that often. Now for my specific filming style, and maybe this is because I started filming basketball and learned to film a certain way and then transitioned that filming style into football, but I really enjoy tracking the action and following the ball when I'm filming. So if I'm filming a throw and it's going out of the quarterback's hands, I'm gonna keep my camera on the ball, follow it through the air, and right into the receiver's hands as one continuous shot. There are some people who like to film the quarterback and then hold on the quarterback for a bit and pan to the receiver. There are some people who will just hold on a certain player the whole shot, and it really depends like what you're filming for and situationally what your objectives are. But if I'm just trying to capture game action, I usually like to follow the ball through the air, and I think it's the best way to show the full play in one shot. Mind you, if I'm ever in a situation where I try to track a ball through the air and there's a pass and I miss it, then I'll usually find the closest player to me and just lock onto them. So if I'm behind the line of scrimmage and there's a deep ball and I just can't follow that ball because it's going away from me and I'm not gonna be able to get a good shot of it, then right when I see the quarterback's about to throw a deep ball, I'll just keep my camera on the quarterback and wait for them to throw the pass even after he's thrown it, I'm going to keep my camera on the quarterback and wait for him to hopefully give me a good reaction shot that's at least usable versus getting a subpar touchdown shot of the ball being thrown 50 yards away from me. Alternatively, if I'm on the other side and I lose the quarterback or lose the ball in the air, then I'll just figure out which receiver the ball is going to. I'll put my camera on him and I'll wait for him to catch the ball. That way, even though I don't have the full action in one shot, I have the quarterback throwing, and then I have the receiver catching and his ensuing reaction. And although that's obviously not the best possible shot you can get, there are reasons why you just might not be able to track the ball. It can get lost in the sun, you can be using the wrong focal length. Sometimes you just make a mistake and miss it, and it happens. But if you can at least get the start of an action and the end of an action and then the reaction to that action, you'll be able to tell the whole story and you don't necessarily need everything in the middle. Now, since I know there's gonna be questions about it, I'm gonna talk briefly about equipment. When I'm filming football, my main camera that I'm using to film is the Sony FX30, and I'll sometimes also use the Sony a7 IV, which was my main driver for filming action earlier in the year, but then I got the Sony FX30 and started filming in 4K 10-bit color in 120 frames per second, and kind of moved the a7 IV to be my pre-game, post-game camera, which is a whole different story that we're not gonna get into in this video. But hey, if you want a video on how to film pre-game and post-game shots for sporting events and football games, let me know in the comments. If it's popular enough, I'll make it. But anyways, those are the two cameras that I use. And then for lenses, I'm typically filming football on the Sony 70 to 200 f4. I've also used the 70 to 200 f2.8. Both are good. The f4 is lighter, which is why I like it. But the f2.8 looks really good, and obviously the faster aperture helps. I like using this lens because when I'm using a crop sensor camera, it gives me enough reach to film the action that I want, but it's not so tight that I can't zoom out and film wide shots if I want them. Or if I'm using like a 200 to 600, then like every shot is tight, and that can look a little bit stale. I'll also sometimes use the Sony 100 to 400 millimeter at 4.5 to 5.6 because 100 millimeters is wide enough that I can still get decently wide shots when I'm filming football and the subjects are further away from me. And then being able to punch into 400 millimeters on a crop sensor camera lets me get really cool tight shots and really showcase the emotion of a certain player. Being able to get like a shot with this type of frame on a quarterback who's way at the other end of the field is pretty cool. And it also gives you the option to park it further down the field and wait for the action to come to you so you can make sure you get that one shot that you really need. So that's really useful as well. Anyways, that's kind of my intro guide to filming football and a lot of the strategies that I've been using over the course of this year to get good shots while filming games. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel because I post videography and video editing tips and tutorial videos similar to this one on a regular basis and I'd love to have you around for those. 
If you liked this content and you want to support my channel, I have my LUTs and effect packs that I use in all my videos, including my football video LUT pack that I color every single football video that I make with, available on my website, peterstrellis.com. That's going to be linked down in the description so you can go check it out. If you have any questions about anything we talked about today, just drop it in the comment section. I would love to have a discussion with you down there. And that's going to be all for today. So until next time, peace.